Hello everyone, this is Sami. Now in today's video, I'm going to be exposing you to an interesting concept in the Flaxweb framework that I bet you don't know about it yet because why? Well, it's not common. And it's also quite interesting because it makes the development process quite easy. See you right after the intro. All right, people, I'm super, super excited back again recording. Now let's dive straight into the video. Now in this video, we are going to be talking about flax class based views. Now I'm quickly going to be bringing on my terminal here. Great. I would want to bring this here. I also want to increase it so that uh, we all could see it clearly. Great. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this 100% uh, terminal here, meaning I'm using one terminal to write the code and another terminal to execute. But you could decide to follow through using uh, VS Code. This would actually work for you. I am just kind of lazy to use VS Code right now. All right. So I also want to... Uh, increase that so first things first i'm actually going to do to actually create a folder right so i, I should call this flax flax demo no i think we should call this flax cbv great and then if i create that i also want to i think that's this is also the beauty of using it uh of me using um what are they calling it a linux terminal i could basically do things much more faster great so i could cd into the flax cbv cbv now once i'm there i can also run this command to create a virtual environment calling it vem and then i also want to uh use the vi editor to open a file called app.py great so this is going to do all this for me and open up uh the vi uh, terminal for me Great, so once the VI terminal opens, I'm going to go to my PowerShell, activate the virtual environment, install. Uh, great, so it's done. So I could come in here, cd into flax cbv, now activate the virtual environment, then activate the virtual environment. Now I can install flax on the virtual environment. So let's see how it goes. Am I connected? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. All right. All right, let's go then. Yeah, it's done. So we're good. We're good. So I'm going to be coming back here. So first things first, I think let's start with the functional base approach, at least what we are used to, right? So i to enter a certain mode if you're if this is just basically to use the vi editor okay so we have from flux imports the flux class right and then we have to instantiate uh the flux i'm just calling it app because i just want to make this uh what we close to what we already know right so this is this they will definitely know why we are passing in double underscore name there and then we are going to be using this app the route we're going to be specifying an endpoint so i'm going to be saying this to signify uh the index definitely and this is going to be the function that's going to be triggered to run this so for now we are not accepting any argument there and then same we are going to be returning we're going to be returning a string and the string is going to be a, a h2 uh, let's say this is this is a gets a request using a function based approach I forget let just make it caps then then definitely want to close that there great so this is a get request using function based approach great so now we have to now do this to say if double underscore name equal to double underscore mean and definitely we know why we are doing this right 
and then we just have to run the app so i want to run my own app in debug in debug mode so i'm going to be saying debug course true and basically this is how we this is a basic flax app you will agree with me now I'm going to be exiting here i'll come to my terminal definitely want to clear this and then let's just do python uh app.py and um yeah you could see that we have uh this up right all right so i will drag this so you can see my url bar here because i want to be typing that here so i've seen local host 5000 and then voila you can see this is a get request using the fba and then if you look at this you see that the request actually came right this is the normal way we actually do the function based approach now let's talk about using the class based approach so i'm going to be going back yeah now if we're going to be using the uh the class based approach now we have to now uh import the method view from the flags views you can also use list view but for me i prefer using method view so that's from flags views right so from flags views import method view great all right now that we have method view here now we're just going to create we're just going to create a class so let's say uh this is a class now this class let's call it um what should we call it let's call this my app and this my app is going to be inheriting from uh the method the method view great so now with this class based approach now you no longer need to be using the conditional checks like if request the method equal post and not if re request the method equals put and all that you could just basically create your your class methods your http class method and flax automatically is going to do the route handling based on the http method on the request so this is what i mean so if i want definitely or you want your routes to handle the get so what i just have to do is say dev, dev get just create a get uh method or a get function but it's actually called a method since it's inside of a function that is the uh part of the things you learn when working with classes and object-oriented programming in python great all right so definitely the first argument is going to be self now we could actually return this same thing we can actually return the same thing i will just change this to cba right i'll change this to cba now you know we tested this right and this is how we got this is a get request now if i'm using the um the class based approach after creating your method what you can now do is to actually use the app object to register to register your um what they call it now to register that particular uh that particular class because as at now flags even if you are inheriting from the method view that comes from flags views the app which is the flags app still have no idea that this thing is existing right it is only in python that python that there is a class called my app but flax doesn't know flax only knows that death. there is a route an index route that anytime i get a, a, a request for the index uh for the this index route which is this i should go ahead and trigger this function to run that is what flax knows right so now we need to let flax know about this particular guy so how do we do that so we say app you use the app and then you use the add url rule in this case you use the add url rule now in the add url rule the first argument is definitely going to be the endpoint or the uri or the url whichever resonates more with you that we want to handle right so we are going to say let's say the ur uh i should be uh let's call this cba well let's call this cbv yes now this is going to be the first argument then 
the next argument is now going to be the view sorry it is actually view function now this view function will now need to specify the function that is going to be triggered hmm? now we are, we are not specifying the method we are going to be specifying the function or the class yes let's see the class that is going to be triggered anytime a request for this uh url comes so the class is definitely my app now this is the reason why i said function actually because because we are inherited from the method view we now have access to the as view uh, method now in this as view method that register now converts that particular class to kind of a functional based approach right so once that is done as it is now we are good to go but now you might not ask me hey samuel what if i am using the url for stuff yeah i got you covered that is because to cater to cater for the url for utility that comes with flax you can pass in a unique identifier for this particular uh uri so i can say for this particular one now so i can say for this particular one it should be uh let's say mm, cbv get probably let's mm, let me use an underscore great cbv get and with that it's done now if i save this check to see if my app is still running yeah my app is uh, running now if i come in here i think what we used was cbv right yeah great if i come in here you see i have a request for cbv and automatically we have the get it was triggered right this guy was triggered so coming back here you can see this guy was automatically triggered and it's run now if i want to handle a post now this is this is one of the uh key differences we'll go to this the second uh, i think i'll just touch on two key differences for now to keep this video short because there's a whole lot i'm just eager to just share there's a whole lot there's a whole lot it has been a long time i recorded so there's a whole lot of information i want to just dish out to the community all right but we'll take it slow and steady all right so now if we're using this approach if we're going to be using this same uh function to handle both a get and a post hmm? now you know what we will do here is to specify to do something like this right methods then as a list will not specify that okay this is going to be accepting a get and definitely this is going to be accepting a post i'm just trying to use a like a a generic approach and then i am definitely going to be getting the request object from flax so now i can now come in and say okay if request dot uh, method method equals uh post i can now come in here and say uh um let's do return something like this then i come in and say this is a post request this is a post request then definitely want to space this out to make it more beautiful so this is what i this is one way we can do it using a functional approach or we could now specify a new endpoint a new route a new function and using the methods now this is actually methods not method sorry and we could use the met, uh the method and explicitly pass post to it because by default all uh, all our uh, routes is going to be accepting a get so we could just do something like this and then automatically this guy is now is no longer going to be this guy is no longer going to be accepting a get request even if we've returned this if i mean we are, if we are going to be making a post request that means if i'm going to be doing this now using curl now you will see it's going to be triggering to respond with this post right this is going to be returning this guy 
but now that is not what i want to even show you now with this same thing here instead of me doing this kind of thing using the functional based approach not like it's bad no it's not bad what i can do is this i would definitely want to remove this so it, it goes back to the default get it goes back to the default get what i can now do is to come in here and just create the endpoint for it the http meta i want to handle for it so in this case i want to handle a post right so i just create a function of post return this and change this to to post and that is it if i also want to now with just doing this anytime a request for anytime a request for this particular stuff uh for this particular endpoint comes and it's a post it's just going to go there and render the post no need for me to say uh no, no need for me to be saying if request the method no need for me to be using the request again so i can also come in so i can also come in here to actually delete that now that is one advantage two because this is a class i can now use the object oriented programming paradigm for it like i can actually have a, an init method which is very very uh important now i can have an init that probably uh less this is init definitely is going to be taking self so i could say okay in this init i want to take a model i try and just try to um Think of a quick example i could say i want to use a model how to take grabbing a model that this respective endpoint http uh, method is going to be working with and their respective templates let's assume you want to be rendering different type of templates and all that so i could say method and i could also say templates right i could do this like this now what i can now do i could say self dot a uh, model to represent the probably the database model i want to work with then self the templates the template i want to actually uh use for this particular class now i could now say this should now be the template argument now with this now i can actually come here in here I, whatever I now pass additional to the unique identifier is now going to be taken. Hmm? It's now going to be taken as uh, what are they calling it? As uh, parameters for the init. So I can come in here and say, let's assume I want to work with the user model, and then I want to return, let's say, and I also want to render the profile.html. Now, for for me to show you that this, I will let on. Let me expand this. Great, so you can see it clearly. Great. So, all right. So I have now specified that this is a model I want to work with, and this is the template. Now, to sh actually show you that this particular argument is actually passed to this particular init, and I have access to it, I can come here. Mm -hmm. and change because we already know this is working right so i can come here i can change this then i can say something like model uh, i will be using f strings here so so let's say uh, it's a lower case so so self so i can say self dot model creates then i can now say templates it's a template uh self dot templates great so i could do something like this now because this is using f i need to put f there great so this is it now with doing this i can also come here create another endpoint create another endpoint mm -hmm. that is still going to be using this same class but now that is the beauty of this now 
But now, the unique identifier can now be, uh, let's say this is, this, let's say this is, uh, let's say this is new CBV now. New, uh, new CBV. And then this should also be, let's just call this CBV. And then let's call this new CVB, new CVB. Uh, okay, new CVB. Now I'll change this to let's say I want to work with um, mm, let's say I want to work with files, the files model, and let's say I want to now render files.html. Now watch what is going to happen. Remember, the first argument must be unique, so that's the reason why I changed that. Now, now just watch what will happen. So you can see that with the same class, eh, I could actually render different things. Work, I could work with different models. I could also work with different. I could also work with different templates, which is very, very sweet, very, very convenient. Uh, I think the word that is coming to my head now is very, very cute. See, I'm very, very demure sorry about that okay so i could actually save that and right here you see it's open it's sorry it's uh it's still running now if i refresh now you can see it's saying that okay the model now i pass is what is the user the template is profile now if i go to near cbv you can see the model has changed to files. The template is files.html. Very fantastic. So this is very, I find this very, very interesting and very, very convenient because if you're using Flags, you can probably build a meaningful stack app now. Instead of you to create a view, instead of you to create a function, a view function to just render the about page, you could just actually create, you could just actually create uh, a view a, a class view that renders all of them for you by just changing the names just change the name and change the respective template and all that the same thing so you can still use um prof if you want to now work with models the same approach it's quite easy very convenient very very fast like it makes life very very easy all right guys i'm going to be stopping you so let me know what you think about um the the flux class base views and if you want me to dive deep into this like how you can use decorators because now since you are going to be using a flux uh, a class based views the way you apply decorators is a little bit different from the way you apply decorators using uh the functional base approach so if you want me to talk about the way you apply uh, decorators or if you really want me to dive deeper into it because there's a whole lot i really want to show you you could uh let me know either on the comments or you could actually uh or you could actually let me know probably via chat and all that i'll, I'll be happy to dive in details